What's up, y'all? My name is Aaron Mallory, a.k.a. Mr. Let Go. And today we're about to discuss the six reasons why your dating life sucks. Let's get it. Number one, you don't even know why you're dating. You just are bored. You just want something to do. You're tired of seeing other people dating in their relationships. And you're just like, yo, I want somebody. And you just don't even know what you're doing and why you're doing it. That is not the reason to actually start wanting to be in a relationship with somebody. You do know the purpose of being in a relationship is to potentially spend the rest of your life with somebody, right? And you're just bored. Get a dog. Regardless of what it is that you do, it has to have some type of bigger purpose to doing it. Let me ask you something. Why do you eat? It's not because you're hungry, because you want this or you want that. It's because your body needs it. It's because if you don't eat, you'll die. You see the purpose in that? There has to be a bigger purpose to dating or wanting to be in a relationship because you're bored, just because you want a boyfriend, just because you want a girlfriend. It has to be a bigger purpose to it. So that's number one. Number two is you don't know how. Now this might be crazy to some people, but a lot of you do not know how to date. You have no understanding of what you're doing. And the simple fact that you keep failing is frustrating you, but you don't realize that you just don't know how to date. You may not know what you're doing. Some of you have been in relationships for like three, four, five years or been in marriages for like 10 years and now you're back out in the dating world and you have no idea what to do and you're frustrated. And the key to this is to find out how to date instead of just getting out here. So you have to understand how to date instead of just getting out here, sitting in front of a guy or sitting in front of a woman like, all right, what do you want and why and who and what? You don't know how to date. Number three, you either don't know anything about the opposite sex or you think they all think a certain kind of way or they want the same type of thing. I think every man or woman has dealt with this in some type of way before. You have an ex that loved something, right? Or they loved doing something or they loved something as far as like an experience, right? Whether it's they loved it when you cooked or they loved it when you did this sexually or whatever. And then you think all men, all they want is sex, right? All men love food, right? So I'm just gonna cook him this or I'm gonna have sex with him. I'm gonna do this and do that. Or a man may say, well, all women love flowers, right? Or all women love this, right? And then you just start operating in this mindset. And then the other person literally would tell you like, yo, I don't like that. And you're looking at them like, what do you mean you don't like that? Everybody isn't the same. And what goes along with that is listening. A lot of men and women don't listen to each other because once you start dating somebody and you start liking somebody, you just like them and you just expect them to like you back, which they seem like they are. And you just start going in a direction. But at the end of the day, it's important for you to listen to that person, have a conversation with that person, get an understanding of what that person goes through, what that person has been through and what that person actually wants in life. Because if you just look at that person like everything's good and, and y'all are just moving along or whatever, everything is romantic or you guys are vibing, that's cool. But it's important to find out what makes that person happy. What makes that person sad? What makes that person afraid? Once you get an understanding of who they are as an individual, you'll be able to understand what they actually need from you and you'll have a good understanding of can you actually give it? Because guess what? Some people may need a whole lot of attention. Some people may like a whole lot of this, a whole lot of that. And you may say like, yo, that sounds like a lot of work, but you have to find out 
early instead of sitting around thinking that they're just like everybody else and they just want this versus that. Like me in particular, a woman can't just come up to me or start dating me and thinking that she's, she's just gonna feed me and, and, and cook for me all the time. That's not necessarily what I like in particular. I don't need you to cook. I can feed myself. I need a woman to listen because I like to talk, right? That's why I'm on YouTube. So depending on who the person is, they might like something that you don't realize that they like, or they may not like something that you don't realize that they don't like. So the easiest way to deal with this is simple. Find out what their two primary love languages are and find out what your two primary love languages are. And that is an easy beginning to find out or to simply open up dialogue about what the other person actually wants. Yo, if you're liking this so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, let's get back to it. All right, number four is really going to hurt. So I want you to brace yourself. You ready? Number four, your type does not want you. Your type does not want you. We all have a type, right? Well, here's the problem with types. A lot of people's types has not changed since they were like in their 20s. There are a lot of women out here who think their type is this six five guy or this guy with a six pack or this guy who does this or whatever it is your type actually is. Or a guy may say like, well, I want a woman with a Coke bottle shape and I want a woman that does this with long hair or whatever. But you may not realize that your type actually was attracted to you when you were 24. But now that you've gotten a little older, you aren't their type anymore. And you're running around expecting somebody to like you because you like them and you're wondering why situations just aren't working out. Your type may not want you. Your type doesn't see you as their type. So what happened? Well, you already know things change. Life changes. You know, you gained a little weight or you've lost a little weight and you're not, you don't have the, the six pack like you used to. You know, you're not really as active as you used to. So I want you to look at your type and say, has my type evolved or is my type the same type since I was in my mid or early twenties? If this is true, you gotta be honest with yourself. This may be one of your issues and you may not even realize it. Your type may not be seeing you as their type. Number five, your energy sucks. See, you don't go to bars, you don't go to clubs, you don't go different places to actually look for a man or look for a woman. You're just out doing stuff, right? And you're kind of a homebody. And you have certain people that may approach you, but those people aren't your type. Remember, we talked about type, right? So you get to a point where you're wondering like, yo, why are these coin balls just approaching me? Why are these whatever's approaching me? Like, get away from me. And you start getting to the point where you have something going on with you that is pushing everybody away and you don't realize it because you're so tired of a person that isn't your type or a type of person approaching you. So you have this look on your face you have this demeanor about you because you don't want to be approached. But you do want to be approached. You just want to be approached by your type but for whatever reason. And you only know what that reason is and it's most likely a reason. Your type or the person that you want to approach you isn't approaching you. It's two reasons though. One, that might not be your type anymore and you gotta wake up a little bit. But two, what if your type does see you as attractive, but you have this look on your face everywhere you go. You have this energy about you. What do they call it? The resting bitch face or something? Yeah, this may be you. So what do you do about this? Simple, be more open to meeting new people. 
So when somebody that isn't your type approaches you, smile, exchange phone numbers, look at it as networking. You never know what you can learn from that person. Start befriending the opposite sex instead of just looking at the opposite sex as just somebody to be with or somebody to have sex with or somebody to date. What about, what about just having friends that are the opposite sex? This would make it where whenever somebody approaches you or whenever somebody sees you as somebody that they would like to meet, they're not just pushed off by your face or by your demeanor. Something for you to think about. Number six, you have habits that you have not gotten rid of and you just expect somebody to deal with them. This is the worst thing out of all six reasons because you know that you have certain habits that you refuse to let go of and you just want somebody to love you anyway, love you for you. I hear women saying, well, wh why don't somebody just love me for me? Why do I have to change? But just speaking to the women, you want a man to change. You get with a guy and at a certain amount of time, you want him to change, but you don't want to change. And this goes along with guys too. You know, a guy might have certain habits. He might like hanging out or going to strip clubs or doing this and doing that. And then he doesn't realize that getting into a relationship or dating somebody exclusively is going to require him to slowly let certain things go instead of continuing to go do the things expecting the woman to be okay with it. Let me give you a few examples of your habits. Are you condescending? Do you interrupt people when they talk? Do you listen to respond instead of listening to understand? Are you a person who feels like they're right all the time? Are you argumentative with virtually anybody? Do you feel like a victim every time something goes wrong? Do you complain too much? When somebody calls you out on something that they don't like about you, instead of you listening and finding out like what you can do to actually change that narrative in that other person's head, you get defensive and start feeling like the person is attacking you. Do you have unrealistic expectations of other people? Are you needy? Are you jealous? Are you controlling? You say you want love, you say you want a relationship, but you're afraid of getting hurt at the same time. So you have this wall up that you know that is there and you're upset that people aren't busting their butts to climb over this wall. And then you get frustrated when they don't do the things that you expect them to do. And the most important part of reason number six is, are you insecure? Are your insecurities hard for somebody to deal with? Are your insecurities hard for you to deal with? See, we all want somebody, but what these six reasons are meant to let you know is that you may have some work to do before adding somebody else to your life. Because if not, that person is gonna leave. Because we all put on a face for about three, four months. You know, it's not lying. You know, women are like, oh, men are liars. Women are not liars and men are not liars. We just inherently put on a face. It's like dating someone's representative until you actually get to know the real person. And when the real person comes out, the real you comes out, the real me comes out, that is when it's important for us to use discernment and say, okay, this person is not healed yet. This person is not ready for a relationship yet. And they pull away. Or you see that this other person isn't really ready for a relationship or they're not healed yet, or they have these habits that are really working your nerves and you stay because you want a relationship so badly. It's important for us to continue to date different people because these six reasons maybe somebody else's reasons and you're seeing them and it's important for you to sit back and say you know what even though i like this person 
they're not for me. I want you to comment below which one of these reasons you identify with the most. Y'all have a good day.